focused on time management essentials. First of all, you run the day or it runs you. A little simple analysis. It's not that difficult to get something started. You run it for a while and after a while it starts running you. That's part of the challenge. I told my staff one day, giving birth to a tiger is one thing, learning how to ride it is something else, right? Sometimes you start it and then it turns around and starts giving you all kinds of trouble. Next, the time you've already committed to labor is enough time. If you're working already 10 hours a day, that's about it. You just can't work much more than that. Uh, Bursts at a time, you can work 12, 14, 16, right? And I'm sure we've all learned to do that, put in the extra time. But after a while, you pretty well have to put your life in balance, or your health is in jeopardy, and your heart's in jeopardy, your blood pressure is in jeopardy, a lot of things, uh, if you don't stay in balance. So you don't have to put in any more hours, probably. All you have to do is just make better use of the hours. A cliche we've all heard. It's not the hours you put in, it's what you put in the hours that counts. Now also you need a written set of goals, time management essential, priorities, good plan for the next 10 years especially, some of the things you want to accomplish, let our dreams pull us through, our objectives sustain us, get us up early, keep us up late, or drive us to do the disciplines, read the books, take the classes, study, whatever is necessary. And a constant review of your goals, because that's how you determine how to use your time, whatever priorities you're going for. Then you need a plan to achieve your goals. And game plans, laying out six months, laying out a year. When you do business internationally, several corporations, we just formed our first Australian corporation. You just got to have game plans to lay all this stuff out. Otherwise, it just doesn't get done. Things get missed. Taxes don't get paid. The details don't get taken care of. You've got to learn to think on paper. How are you doing, guys? Welcome to another episode of Breaking Bread, a safe place to share ideas on a personal human development, deliver around food, fitness, and motivation. I'm your host, Oris Jones, the Game Changer. This is your game changing moment. Yeah! So today I'm running a little behind uh, schedule, a little change of plan as um, put me off time a little, no problem, um, the show must go on as they say. Uh, I've got Claire back again, we're going to discuss a few topics. Um, I have a few things that I want to discuss today as well that um, hopefully we can get them through quick and easy and we can still cook a meal. Today I've not uh, put a meal together, I'm going to open my cupboards just like my friend my hair does when he comes here and I'm going to create a meal from what's in my cupboards. And that's what it's about, guys, sometimes working with, with, with basically what you have, okay? So today I'm going to start off with, uh, as what Jim Rohn was saying about your time and learning how to use your time wisely. And the best way to use, learn how to use your time is that you have to have plan of action, goals, objectives. And if you've got these things, you've got something to work towards. If you haven't got these things, it's, it's like you're basically walking blind and open for the best, which is, as we all know, you're going to be leading up to all kinds of stuff that you ain't going to be happy with, okay? So, one of the big things is today I want to talk about value and how you value yourself as a person. And I think sometimes we use the word a bit, a bit um, not to our best advantage or, or basically come across in the best way of what the word value means, okay? So, how we could how people use it is like, oh, you don't value me because da -da 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 -da, I'm this and I'm this and you don't value me and blah, blah, blah. Again, it's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes you've got to look at it. What does value mean? Um, if we look at a pair of trainers to a, to another pair of trainers, this one might cost more because people, um, I don't know, people value this one more more than they value this one. But the whole concept behind value is is what work you're putting in, okay? Um, how much effort you're putting into something. So you can't expect someone to value you more than another person if you're not putting more work on that person. It's like um, what Les Brown says, it's all about what value you bring to the marketplace. So you could work in a company and you could think to yourself, all this company pays me is this little bit of money here. But that's what they pay you. The 
because somebody else in the same company they could be paying them 20 grand more than you 30 grand more than you 50 grand more than you it's all about value and uh, you can always increase your value uh, over the time over the years over the months it's all about you educating yourself whether it's going on courses whether it's upping your game but we can always um, increase our value on a day-to-day -day basis all depends on what your mindset is like and how you are as a person okay um quick little um thing we're going to talk about basically our retreat and uh, i think claire's going to give you a little insight of basically what we're doing on the retreat why you should come on our retreat and um yeah uh yeah good give, give us a, a little rundown about the retreat and, and why, why should people come on this game changer retreat why should i give you my money <laughs> Well, for, well, we were talking about value, and it's certainly value for money because just for the price of £130, you're going to get to go away on the Friday and come back on the Sunday. Everything is included in that price, so you get all beautiful, freshly cooked meals. So to me, it's worth just going away and just for the meals because um, Horry Serve is a fantastic cook. Anyone who's experienced his cooking will know. Um, very flavoursome, very healthy, nutritional meals. Um, yeah, so that's all included in the price. Plus then you've got my yoga sessions, again, really good quality yoga sessions, um, mindfulness sessions, and we, we're going to be, it's all new experiences, meeting new people. We've got a couple now signed up, um, and we're just wanting to make it a little bit more um, accessible to people. So, you know, if more people want to join us, um, inbox us and we'll send you the details we're going to be going up old man coniston which is a small mountain in lake district and um, so that's again that could be challenging phase of um, mountains or heights um, i had one guy messaging me last night asking me about mountains what 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 does it entail and i was like so sort of telling him about the retreat and said just try and overcome your fears jump on um yet to hear back whether he is or not but <laughs> we'll see um, yeah, so it's going to be a fantastic weekend. Oh, we'll be doing kayaking as well on Lake Coniston, um, a boat ride, and there's just loads, loads, of, like I say, value for money is definitely there. So, um, and your time, you know, what are you going to be doing next weekend if you don't go? So, you know, you might be, you might have great plans, that's all well and good. Um, but if, you've, if you're at a loose end, I would highly recommend it. You know, if you're just going to be sat around or just in your house, get out, explore the world. So, absolutely. Um, there's not much more I can say on that. Um, absolutely, definitely value for money. Um, and again, it's getting away, getting away to the countryside, having that bit of a break, um, trying new things, uh, facing your fears. And again, like you said, um, I think it's all about okay then um, coming away from the norm you know breaking the mold of, of doing the same thing that you normally do every weekend and looking for a different high um like you know there's nothing wrong with going out and having a drink but it's like you know finding different ways to to get that 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 um that feeling that you get when you go out or when you when you're having a party it's just about how can i get the same feeling in different environments you know and also again you know having a bit of health healthy um conversation healthy food uh, like you said, the yoga, stretching your body, uh, working on different muscles, and even again, just just see other things, what's going on around you. Again, the, the walk as well. It's a, it's a, it was a, was a, well. The last time I was on a walk was a beautiful walk. Um, a little raining, but even the rain didn't stop us. It was absolutely beautiful seeing the water coming out. Anyway, like I said, it was just a beautiful, beautiful experience. Um, there was some videos I posted on the experience the last time that we went here. So again, you can check out whether it's the Facebook, the Instagram. You can see uh, the videos of the previous uh, retreat that went away. So again, guys, uh, it's on, uh, well, it's a week on Saturday. So again, a week yeah. Today. Well, yeah, a week today. Yeah, sorry, a week today. A week today. Sorry, right, see? Do you need to quit? <laughs> so yeah, a day today, a week today. Sorry. So again, uh, inbox me or Claire. Um, yeah. Again, guys, like I said, you ain't nothing to lose. There's only to gain, definitely. And um, it's about creating memories and creating memories that can stick with you and you know, you can tell your, your, you know, your, your siblings or tell your friends and whatnot. So it's definitely a trip that shouldn't be missed. And yeah, you got to get on it because after this, we're going to start going indoors. So definitely, um, this might be the last outdoor trip. So again, for you guys that's never been camping, remember, we provide tents, we provide beds, we provide food. All you got to do is bring your sleeping bag and change of clothing. 
and you obviously you toothbrush. That's it. Yeah, everything else is basically there for you. So you don't have to worry about anything apart from a, a sleeping bag and a toothbrush and some clothes to change, definitely. So yeah, moving on. Uh, going back to what we're saying about uh, people as individuals and, and, and growth and um, bettering yourself. Most of us, sometimes, we, we get to a situation in our lives where we, we, we're kind of stuck on autopilot because the next crossover is where we feel uncomfortable. It, it's the uncomfortableness where it makes us stay in a rut and it makes us also stay in sometimes a job that we don't really like but we're, we're kind of scared of leaving because of the the... the um, the, the things that we have in our heads that could go wrong rather than things that we have in our head that can go right. Because we are natural people to always look at the bad side rather than the good side, okay? Because most of us don't think, well, if I leave this job, I'm going to get a better job, I'm going to make more money, I'm going to be more happier, and da 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 We don't think that. We think, we lose this job, uh, I'm not going to have no money, I'm going to lose my house, and da 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 And you think, oh, no, I'm not going to leave the job. I'm going to stay here. And every day you go to work, you're unhappy, okay? So what I'm saying to you guys, go for the leap, go for the jump. Uh, I'm not saying for you to leave your job. Don't don't come on. Horace, I've left my job because you because you told me to. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying to you, like, is that you know, if, if you've got a passion or a dream, start working towards that dream. Start working on that on that little passion. You know, whether it's a Saturday Sunday you dedicate to that passion, whether it's uh, one hour a day you dedicate that passion. I was speaking to a, a person yesterday, and they were saying they get up at three o'clock in the morning because they know that by seven o'clock their kids get up. So between three. And basically six, that's their time to do what they need to do. You know, whether it's read a book, whether it's, whether it's meditate, whether it's work out, whether it's up the game. They know them three hours is their hours to basically do what they need to do. Because after that, the kids are up and it's up and down. Da -da -da -da. And before you know, you've got to go work. And then by the time you come at night time, up and down, cooking food when you're back to bed. So there was a saying that I go by. Find the time to find the time. So it means that we do find time, but we mostly will find time for the things that we think benefit us rather than finding time for the things that really truly benefit us. So I was also talking yesterday, we were talking about um, doing what's hard now so you can have an easier life later on in life. But most of us want to do it easy now and have it hard later on. So what does that mean? Do you know what that means, Claire, by, by any chance? What that means? That, that saying means... Well, I suppose it's like deferred gratification, isn't it? And I suppose in a way, because if you put your hard work in now, then the rewards will come later. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're just going for fun and um, you know short term happiness mm -hmm. now, then yeah, you might suffer a bit. No, that's it. That's that's one hundred percent. Absolutely one hundred percent. It's like um, you know, um, there was times when this party's going on. You know, things are going on, I'm like, now nah, I'm going home, I've got, I got work in mind, I'm going to bed. Oh, you're boring, you, you, why are you going? Yeah, because I've, I've got I've got a goal, I've got a plan, you know, I've got objectives, you know, I've got things that I want to achieve. And they're the sacrifices that you have to make sometimes in life to basically get what you want to get. Because, let's all face it, you know, time is something that we can't get back, okay? So the last thing you want to do is, you know, again, I'm not saying I say it's not about, you know, going out there and enjoying yourself, but I'm saying you have to have a plan in place there's no good just going through life just closing your eyes and hoping for the best because one minute you wake up you're 60 years of age and you've not you've not put the work in to basically get, help you to live a lifestyle that, that that you that that you desire and that's when the anxiety comes in the, the depression comes in because now you're looking at other people and wishing that you had the same when probably You've not looked at the work that they've put in, or you've looked at what, what the ending result was. You've not looked at how many hours that they've had to bang at their craft to eventually get good at what they're doing. So remember, find the time to find the time. Because like time is something that we can't get back. You know, and like I says, again, there's nothing watching TV, there's nothing going out to going out, but again, you, you have to have a balance, especially if you want you know, uh, you know the, the nice car, the big home, the holidays, these kinds of things. You wanna, you wanna retire at fifty or whatever. The work needs to be put into like today, like right now. Um, so again, what I'm saying to you guys is, it's up to you to make that change. We always have a choice. A lot of people don't want to take responsibility, so we we we, we, see, we seem to be living on the past. 
Um, and when we think about it, I think most people nowadays have got a, a terrible past, a bad past, um, whether it's neglect, whether it's trauma, um, whether it's you know not having a mum and dad. I think a lot of us have grown up with all these things, but at the same time we still have a choice to, oh, I, I wouldn't say shake it off, but we have a, we, we have a choice to say, okay then, are we going to keep living in the past? Or we're going to live in the present that can affect our future. That's going to give us a better future. So as much as most of us have an upside down past, we still have the choice to change um, what that what that entails. So it's a, it's about again coming out of the comfort zone, coming off autopilot, and making a massive change. And um, like I was saying to Claire before last week, the reason why I wanted to end the show was to inspire other people who felt as if like they wanted to do certain things in life but they couldn't have the confidence whether it's to talk in front of a camera whether it's to put the idea together whether it's waiting for it to be perfect you know it's about sometimes learning on the job you know starting something today and learning on the job and eventually you, you might get to basically where you're in a situation where you feel oh yeah i'm good at this but you have to make that kickstart today so like for yourself if if you want to make that that push that you made where would you be now like, like, what would your normal weekly routine be if you want to make that push to say, okay, then I'm now going to go to, I don't know, part-time or whatever? Um, well, I'd be possibly still in a full-time job at school running the PE department, but I decided to cut that down to part-time and make a go of my business because I love my job. I do. I, um, I'm really happy there and I, I want to balance that. Being able to do that and my own stuff is just amazing. So everything I'm doing in life at the moment, I'm just loving getting up for. Um, it's not like I'm feeling like I'm dragging myself to work, which is a bonus for anyone. But what I did feel like when I was there, I, I felt like I was putting all of my time into that, that job and that it did feel unbalanced. So I knew something had to change. I'm sat, I've been sat on all these ideas for years and it, I just felt unaligned and out of balance so I would probably be still working all the hours God sends for like in work giving all of my time to there which I do love love my job love the kids there can't complain at all and um, it's fantastic uh, financially you know it's okay it pays the bills and everything it's really nothing to be sniffed at but you know when something's not right you you just feel like you're not fully living your truth, um, what's the word, your true, I can't think of the word, fulfillment, like I'm not feeling fulfilled because like I wanted to do yoga teaching, I wanted mm. to do a bit more ladies boxing and stuff like that, my first aid training is now, the work's coming in, I'm now mm. again on Monday doing some, possibly Wednesday as well, so I want my days off from work, um, now if I was still in work I wouldn't have that time mm -hmm. to take that extra work on, mm -hmm. so yeah, the work's coming in, uh, and the Reiki healing as well has been, um, I've just been drawn into that, I, um, I just felt drawn back to the level two course, and I've been, I did one yesterday morning before I went on to work, I, I had um, a friend who I did, and I loved doing it, It's um, so but like I say, everything I'm doing at the moment, I'm just loving, so um, I'm giving, I'm helping others, and I'm not necessarily always getting the financial benefits, but um, it's not always about that for me as well. I think sometimes just helping people. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think I think what you said is spot on. Um, I was listening to Les Brown this morning, and he was talking about if you go to the graveyard, that's where you see the most is talent. You know, but a lot of people have died and and and, and they've not um, lived the dreams that came to them. They've they've just. Um, you know, stayed comfortable, they stayed in autopilot, they've stayed in a job where, like I said, it, it just pays the bills, um, rather than chasing them dreams, which probably would have made them, whether it's financial, better, or would have made them a bit more happier. But again, um, we, we do get to a point sometimes where, even though we want to have the crossover, we are a lot scared, <gasps> because it is scary out there. I mean, the majority of us get a job because it's a safety blanket. We know every single month, we're going to get this, and we know, um, yeah, I've got this. Without that job now, whether it's an entrepreneur, whether it's a side hustle, you can't actually say how much you're going to get on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week, month-to-month. So it is scary. 
But at the same time, you can also say, okay, then I'm working on a job where I'm getting out of my bed and I'm thinking, wow, is it Friday yet already? You know, you start from Monday and you're already wishing for Friday. So these are the things that you've got to have a balance. You know, um, we have one life to live and, you know, I don't think we're always here to just pay bills. I think, you know, we're here to enjoy life, laugh, smile, um, have fun and meet people, get out. I think there's a large part of us that, that we've been born to do that rather than, you know, 56 to 70, 80 hours at work and all we're doing is paying bills. And the rest of it, like I said, but we can't even enjoy ourselves because we're always watching the clock. So definitely it's a time to look at, um, you know, that side hustle. Push that side hustle. Um, and then before you know that side hustle could, could give you the freedom that you need to go to part time, like what Claire's doing. Or it can make you say, you know what, okay, this is not for me now. I'm now going to focus on this because this is where my passion is. So definitely, guys, value is uh, it's a must. You need to look at yourself and say, okay, how do I value myself? And we need to stop looking at values like, like, um, like girlfriend and boyfriend thing, like um, you don't value me or da 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 It's like, leave that outside, mate. It's absolutely stupidness. Um, the value I'm talking about is the concept of like, you know, you're going for a job. Now, and the person saying to you, okay, this job is at, I don't know, a thousand pounds a month. You need to say to yourself, well, no, I'm worth two thousand pounds. Or, like you said, you might be doing some Reiki healing. You might be doing fitness. You know to yourself, your rate is 30 quid. Someone's saying, well, I'll pay you 15. Well, no, my, weight, my, 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 my rate's 30 quid. Why is your, why is your weight, sorry, why, why is your, um, your worth 30 quid? Because it's took me 20 years to learn this. Or it's took me 10 years to learn this. So that's why I'm worth. So this is what I'm saying to you about valuing yourself in that kind of way of knowing what you're worth because of how many years that you've studied your craft of whatever you're doing out here. You know, whether it's, like I said, rig healing, first aid, uh, personal training, accountants, doctor, lawyer, whatever you're, you're pushing out here, remember that you put them hours in to get that craft behind you. So value yourself more than what, because let's be honest, a person nine times out of ten ain't gonna pay you what you're worth. They're gonna try and undercut you, so they can say, okay, then right, <laughs> I've just got this for cheap. You know, we all looking for the cheap, cheap, cheap. And um, got a friend called Pete. Pete says to me, Horace, you buy cheap. I can't remember the full saying, but it's basically you buy cheap, you buy it twice. So when I'm out in the mountains and I'm walking about, I know if I want to buy a pair of gloves, and there's one there for two pounds, and there's one for twenty quid. I've got to buy the £20 one because I know the one for a pound that's not going to last or it's not going to keep my arms warm as much as they need to keep warm so even though this one's cost 20 quid, as long as I know that it's got the material and it's got the, the stuff I need I've got to spend that more money because I want my body to keep warm when I'm out in a mountain and it's below minus you know again with certain things we have to look at you know the value of things and say okay then right I have to pay this same with like somebody's uh, time You've got to um, value a person's time, you know, to say, okay, yeah, that person's worth this. Because, like, if you go to a restaurant, like, if you go into a restaurant, yeah. yeah, so when you go to a restaurant and you get your bill and the person goes, all right, that meal you just ate is 45 quid. Do you say to him, well, now nah, I'm going to have to give you 32 pounds. <laughs> I'm going to give you 25 quid. I give him a tip. There you go, <laughs> yeah. So, so why is it we can give the person who, who, who in a restaurant a tip or whatnot or behind a bar, but somebody that sells you a service, you want to undercut them, especially if you know them as well. You want to undercut them. Why is it, why is it we do that? And um, we've got to stop doing this because, like I said, that person out here maybe by themselves trying to uh, make it work, and all you're trying to do is undercut them. So let's value people for what they were people definitely. But um, yeah, we're behind time. I'm not got a recipe. I'm gonna go in my kitchen. I'm gonna go in my cupboards, and I'm gonna try and miraculously get us a recipe together, get us some food to eat. So. Yep, let's transfer into the kitchen. Do you want to bring your chair into the kitchen there? Yeah. Let's make our way into the kitchen. Yeah. So like I said, guys, I've got no... Um, I've got no... Uh, nothing planned. I've got no uh, food. So again, I'm going to probably... No, no, the camera's fine. Just grab a seat where you are there. Okay. And um, yeah, we're going to try and put something together. Gonna try and put something together. So so far, I found um, found some of this here. 
Let me try and give it some more light because it looks a little bit darkish. It's a bit darkish. So we're looking, oh, that's a lot better. Okay, so um, I found some pasta here, which is obviously we can't just eat pasta, can we? So let's look at what else we can find in this cupboard here. Uh, no, you're fine there, you're fine, you're fine. So let me see what I can find in the fridge. So we've got some of this, we've got some of this, we've got some of this, we've got some of this. And we've got this here. What else we got? What else? 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 So far, um, got a bit of pepper. I got some uh, cabbage. I don't know if I'm going to use that. I got some mushrooms. I got some coriander. I got some spring onion. I got some chow, chow pow. Is it chow pow? Chow pow. I got um, cherry tomato. No, a beef tomato. Sorry. So these are the things I've got here. So I'm going to miraculously put a recipe together. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to boil my kettle because I'm going to get my pasta going as fast as I can just to get us going, so that'd be great. Um, if you could do that, would be great. So let me get this out here now. Just the lid for this. Oh, that's not the lid for that. This is the lid. Oh, that's not the lid. And you've got all these lids, and you can't find the lid that you want. Can't find the lid that you want. There we go. So yeah, the first thing I'm gonna do guys, get my pasta going. Bring this in a bit more so you can see me. And this is it guys, I got like a bit of a mad angle. So uh, you're gonna have to give, forgive me guys because the uh, angle that I've got in the kitchen is not the best angle. So where we at? So I've got some pasta, got some brown pasta here. Uh, again, I try and stay away from the pasta on the rice. I try and move to the couscous and the quinoa. But again, I've got this in my cupboard, so I'm going to use it up. So it's all about using up what's in your cupboard. Instead of me going shopping, I'm going to use up what's in your cupboard. So, Mihai, I'm doing what you're doing there, Mihai. Respect for the, the skills that you come around and show me. Respect for the skills, my brother. So, yeah, throw this in there. And today as well, I've got a bit of mission. I've got to leave here. I've got to uh, get my daughter. My daughter's got a race next week, Tuesday. So I'm gonna put some work in in the park. We're gonna go for a little jog, and we're gonna um, we're gonna put the practice in, guys. It's so essential to whatever you have in front of you to do your preparation, do your planning. Okay, there's there's nothing worse than basically starting something without preparation. But you could say, Horish, oh, you've not prepared for your food today. You're right. Yeah. But nine times out of ten, I am prepared. Today, you caught me a little bit off guard. But um, yeah, it's a must that you know when you're doing things out there, get your practice, get your preparation. And also for you guys who are out there who have kids, you know, find the time to find the time. Definitely. Tessa, how are you doing? Hey, I'm great. Good, 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 yeah. good. I've had quite a relaxed day today. Okay. So if you was working, would you have time to go to the gym on the sauna and the jacuzzi? No. Okay, so, so that's all. But so. to be fair, I am working all, all weekend because I'm going on Scouts Camp tomorrow. Okay. And I'm doing G Duke of Edinburgh, so I'm actually walking on Sunday with the Duke of Edinburgh. Camping over tomorrow night. So okay. I thought I need a nice chill day today. Be a lady of leisure. There's nothing wrong with that. Not wrong with that at all. Not wrong with that. So I haven't got a weekend this weekend. But like I say, it's all stuff I love, so I'm not grumbling either with that. Yeah. So the first thing guys, I've just um, just sliced up my mushrooms. See us there, I'm gonna fry these off. And then I'm gonna add the ingredients along the way. So I'm gonna start with, with my mushrooms. We've got a little bit of oil left. And um, this, is a, this is another thing guys. Um, I'm trying to come away from traditional oil and I'm trying to start using stuff like this. Can we see this here? Can we see this? Can we see this? Can we see this? Can we see this? So again, yeah, I'm trying to come away from the oil because again, the more you look at nutrition and the more you look at what's good for you, realize the stuff that we've been that we've been getting sold for all these years are killing us. 
Guys, do your research. Absolutely do your research. And like I said to you guys, don't take my word from it. Always do your research. Like I says, I'm now cooking with this oil here. This is extra virgin oil. And even this, I'm trying to come away from this, guys. And this is this is this is this is the one that we when you go in the um, supermarket. This one might be two quid. I mean, you can get the other one, which is like fifty pence. So I've been trying to come away from the fifty pence one, and I'm going to this one. Now I'm hearing that. This is where you need to be, guys. You know, the coconut coconut oil. Yeah, coconut oil is what you need to be at. So again, do your research. Do your research, guys. Do your research. I got some, uh, so it's called chop pow. Is it chop pow? Chop pow. I think this is mostly like a, a chop pow, whatever you call it. I don't know. But this is a, I think it's basically a, like a Chinese. I think if, when you go to Chinese and you get like the Chinese meat, these are the kind of stuff to put in it. So it's very nice. Uh, and I'm going to mix it with my spring onion. And I'm going to mix it with my, with my leek as well. So I'm going I'm to have these three flavors mixing together. I can't wait to taste it. I'm, I'm all feeling it ready in my mouth. I'm all, mm. Mm. Get that ready, man. Feels nice. So yeah, get these going on. I'm gonna, uh, I got a, got a bit of this as well. I'm gonna put a bit of this in there, a bit of pepper. I'm just using up, guys. What's in my cupboards? What's in my fridge? I'm not wasting anything. I'm not wasting anything, man. So anyway, uh, what, what got you into like walking, Claire, and camping, but, like, like. Was, was that a thing that you've done from a child? From like a, from a, from a kid or was that something that... Um, that um... Yeah, I suppose I've got my dad, my mum and dad have always had us out in parks, like local parks. So I was quite privileged with my childhood with that, with that um, like my dad would take me out every Sunday and doing little walks and stuff. So I've always had a love for nature and being outdoors. And then um, as a young adult, I got into mountains. Um, I've done the Spanish Pyrenees. Um, so what is the Spanish Pyrenees like? Well, for example, tell us how much mountain. How many miles have you, have, have you um, scaled up? I've never actually counted, and you put me on the spot with that. <laughs> oh, no, well, well, give, give us, give I've us. Done, like, I've done. Have you done five? No, a lot more than that. Oh, there yeah, you go then. Oh, it's I'm... like, for example, I've done the Spanish Pyrenees with a range of mountains, so, like, and you go walking for days. I think we did about a week up there, so we did loads of them. And then um, I've done the French Alps, um, where me and my sister just got our backpacks and tents and went for three days on the French Alps. So I think we did about, I can't remember if it was three of the peaks or five that we did in three days. I can't remember, I'd have to ask her. Um, I've done obviously the UK's national three peaks. I've done that in the 24 hour challenge, the Ben Nevis, Scarfell Pike and Snowden. I've also done it with you guys on the Game Changer. Uh, I've done Snowden, I don't even know how many times, just probably hundred, <laughs> maybe, I don't know, a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, I've taken the little nephews there, wild camping even and stuff, so yeah. I've just got a love for mountains. And so where's wild camping? Tell us, what's wild camping? Wild camping is, um, it's actually illegal in England, but I kind of do it anyway, um, like on Kinder Scout and stuff. As long as you you don't leave a trace, you usually don't get moved on. Um, I'm not going up there with, you know, having a party, so um, I'm usually all right with you doing wild camping, to be fair. In Scotland, it's legal, so you can do it anywhere in Scotland, which is great. Um, it's basically where you, do, you don't have campsites, so you... The downside is obviously you don't have your toilet facilities and showers, so you have to... Um, wow, well, so you got to do it in a bush? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, nature wind. <laughs> so guys, you need, oh, yeah. you need a shovel. You need a shovel. You shovel. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I've always been quite fortunate with that side of things. <laughs> do the nature wind, but... <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you're going to do the other stuff. <laughs> shovel. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so that's cam wild camping. Um, I just love it. I don't know why I love it so much because I never sleep. Um, I'm always really cold at night. Even in the summer, I get cold. Um, so yeah, but I love. There's nothing better than opening up your tent and just being there in nature, looking out at mountains. And, yeah, it's really nice. Uh, well, um, I got into camping very lately. Um, 
I think I got into camping and walking mountains probably the best part of starting up this year. Um, I felt it's something that I wanted to do for a long time ago, but didn't have any friends or any, um, or didn't know any colleagues that basically done it until when I started really and truly looking at my circle of people that, that I was around because I'm my circle of people. It's, it's massive. D, how you doing, brother? Hope you're fine and well. Carl Bailey. Yeah, I see the family's getting big. You know what I mean? Make me happy seeing you, man, but definitely. But yeah, um, I looked around at my circle and I realised there's people that I know that go on walks, that, that go on that go on camping. So I thought, okay, I'm going to start to um, get in tune with these people. And once I started, you know, seeing these people a bit more and started hanging out with people a bit more, I started doing the camping, I started doing the walking, and... Um, I absolutely loved it, and then from there it was about can I get people in my in my community to uh, to, to to basically do it. So that's what I've, I've been trying to do for the last I don't know how many months is to get people in my community and any community just to get out, um, come away from the city, uh, come away from the cars, come away from the, the 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 crowded places, and basically go out there like you said, whether it's the wild and just see nature for itself. Um, and I kind of feel vulnerable. I think a lot of it for me, I like to feel sometimes vulnerable thinking, you know, I haven't got my, 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 um, my things around me, you know, like, like yeah, your, your comforts that you normally have at home. So for me, it, it's just another thing to make you realize that, you know, you're, you're very, you're, it's like you're a small person in, in this big, massive world, you know? So uh, it's always good to have that appreciation to, to say, you know what, yeah, um, it, it's, it's definitely a growing feeling to have, to, to be able to go somewhere and um, adapt and learn while, you, while you're out there. So for me, it was a great feeling. And, you know, it's like every time I, I get free, I'm definitely going to be out there. And guys, like I said, it's a feeling where sometimes you can't even describe it. It's a thing like you have to describe it. It's like, I mean, you have to go out there to describe it yourself. So it's like me saying, right, me asking you, what's the mount? It's like me saying to Claire, all right, Claire, what was walking up Mount Everest like? And you can say, well, it was cold, it was damp, it was dark. My leg, left leg, good, but my right leg, did it. And all I'm getting, I can, I can, I can vaguely have an image in my head. But unless I've done it myself, I can't naturally say what it was really and truly like to 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 really and truly walk up that mountain. So again, guys, it's so um, when it comes to experiences in life, some experiences you have to go through yourself. There's no good to someone telling you a story. You have to find it yourself. You know what I mean, Max, what are you doing? So definitely, it's uh, a thing that you want to, um, again, find the time to find the time to definitely um, experience these feelings. So, so far, guys, I'm cooking up. Got my pasta on the fire here. Got my mixed veg. What does my mixed veg look like? That's what my pot looks like there, guys. And again, all I've done is open up my fridge and I just took a few ingredients out of my fridge. So now I'm putting in my chop, my chop pal, chow pal. Oh, can't, can't pronounce this properly. So I'm going to throw this in there now. And uh, yeah, like I was saying, it's it's definitely a dream when you can uh, open your cupboards and find a few ingredients and start cooking. And that's what cooking's about. Cooking's about experiment, experimenting. There is there isn't no uh, failure or no false way of cooking. It's just about you trying certain things, and as the more you cook, the more you get confidence, and the more you try new things. So it's definitely uh, when it comes to cooking, guys, it's all about trial and error and learning from certain things, putting certain things together. And yeah, and, and keep practicing every single time. Definitely keep practicing. So, so on this retreat, if if you do sign up with me and Claire, you know I will be cooking. And um, when I'm cooking, you can see what I'm cooking. You can also help what I'm cooking, and you can also ask me questions, and I can try and uh, advise you. And again, when Claire's doing her yoga, you know you can ask questions. And again, it's like it's like having your personal chef and your personal Yoga person at hand, you know. Come on, guys. Who has that? Not unless you're rich, yeah. So you're gonna get the experience and the opportunity to have these people at hand that can, you know, answer your questions night and day. And also, again, like she says, um, go for a canoe, canoe in a, a massive lake. Where I'll be honest with you guys, um, I'm not scared of water, but I'm scared of water. I don't know if that I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but you see, when you go into a, like a lake or you go into a water and you think to yourself, I can't see the bottom, it starts being a different game. But I'm also a person that likes to kind of like, um, I kind of like to 
uh, feel the fear and do it anyway. That's oh, the book, by the way. I'll be teaching some personal survival skills as well. Because obviously I'm a qualified lifeguard and a trainer assessor and um, a swimming teacher and everything. So I'll be doing some personal survival and how to survive in open water, if ever you do come on the So, yeah. So there you go, guys. You can be jumping in this massive lake. For me, a lake is something that as a kid, mm -hmm. a lake you can touch the floor. If you can't touch the floor, that's a sea. That's how I see it in my head. My feet can't touch the floor, that's the sea. That's not no lake, it's the sea. But again, as she says, you were jumping in, in this massive lake, can't touch the floor, but you were learning survival skills. And guys, for me personally, I'm a person, it's best to know than not to know. Or it's best to have and not need than to need and not have. That's how I like to live my life, okay? So again, I'm not trying to say tomorrow morning we're going to be underwater. But you never know when you've been in a situation where you thought, you know, that, that skill that you've learned can help you or can help somebody else. So all these skills that you're getting at hand, guys, it's worth coming along and seeing the trip. Definitely worth coming and seeing the trip. So where are we at right now? We're, um, I'm putting my beef tomatoes in here. Um, cutting these up a little bit because uh, the beef tomatoes are a bit big. So I don't want like, a massive choking beef tomato. So I'm going to slice it up a little bit. Definitely slice this up. Definitely, 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 definitely. So where are we at? Over here, over here. Put this in there. And then the coriander has only got a little bit left. It's only a little bit of coriander here. It's nothing special. But again, I don't want to waste it. I want to use up every little thing in my house. I'm not into the wasting. I'm not into the wasting. <laughs> so again, get the coriander up in there. That's the coriander done now. Definitely one for, for getting value for money. Definitely that kind of person, definitely. So I'm gonna throw this little bit of coriander in there. And again, this is absolutely way under a fiber. This is ingredients that I've used maybe three, four, five times, and now I'm using them for the last time. So I've definitely got my money value out of this here. And again, it's an easy recipe, a quick recipe. You're looking at probably about, I don't know, 12 minutes to get this recipe done and yeah like I said it's going to be delicious uh, and it's going to have the, the vitamins in there look at all the colours guys you know I love co cooking the colours I've got my yellows in there I've got my reds in there I've got my greens in there I've got my oranges in there yeah I'm the colour man so yeah I'm going to give that a couple of seconds all I'm focusing on now is just my pasta long the pasta feels soft yeah my pasta's done Give the pasta just a little bit of a, a little bit of salt. I've got the um, what's it called? I've got the even down to the, the salt. As much as I'm trying to use all these these posh salts, I'm even trying to come away from that as well, guys. I'm trying to definitely come away from salt within itself. Go so put that back over there, for me, please. Thank you very much. Um, put these over here. Put this in here. That there. It's over here. Out two plates. Again, I'm gonna plate this up, guys. I'm gonna. Uh, where's my spoon? My spoon over there, like a madman. Again, I'm gonna drain this off. So again, uh, I'm vegetarian. As you can, I will, if you've been following my, my, my programs, you can see I'm vegetarian. So I'm always trying to show people. I'm not trying to tell people to be all vegetarians. I'm not trying to say that, but I'm saying if you learn how to cook vegetarian, it gives you an opportunity that you can do both. You can do meat as well as vegetarian. Some some of us want to do the crossover, but we're not sure what to cook. So when you come on this retreat, I'll be showing you the recipes that I'm cooking. Also, again, guys, I keep talking about this book, but this book's coming. This book's coming. Keep patient, man. Keep patient. Be patient. So again, I'm putting this little pot. The pasta here. And again, that was what you call a good um, estimate. Estimate there. Again, on top. Again, like I said, guys, it's a quick uh, meal. But sometimes we haven't got time to be in the kitchen 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. You've got time to be in the kitchen an hour. 
You've got time to hold me over, but probably only Claire. I ain't got time to be pushing her. No, man, I've got things to do. I'm on a mission. I love cooking. I've got no time to be in the kitchen for an hour. I do like the quick ones like this as well. Most of the time. So again, let me get your fork there. Got two of these there. So again, this is what we're looking like, guys. We finished. This is a. Uh, I don't, I don't think I can f find a name for it. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I can't find a name. If you can find a name, guys, text. Game changer pasta. Game changer pasta. I don't know. Tell me a name. So again, guys, it's a quick uh, recipe. Um, again, what's in my cupboards? I'm not going out and bought anything. And this is about learning to use what's in your cupboards before you go out and shop again and basically um, spend more money. Use up what's in the cupboards. Learn how to look at ingredients, put them together, and make a meal basically out of nothing. And that's when you start being a true chef in your own home. So again, Horace Jones, the game changer. That was your game changer moment. So thank you to Claire for coming again. And remember, guys, if you want to come on your retreat, inbox me, inbox Claire for information. And um, yeah, please like and share. And remember, value yourself. Don't use it in a way of like, well, you don't value me because there, there, there. I'm talking bigger than that. Okay, you can't expect something to, someone to value you if you're not bringing true value to the table. You understand? So you need to you, you need to learn what the, the concept of value is rather than thinking, well, I'm pretty and I've got this and that, you must value me. No, okay? The concept of value means that what you bring to the table, you know, how, how you've enhanced something, how you brought more skills to something, okay? So remember again, guys, find the time to find the time. I was joined the Game Changer. A wonderful evening, guys. Please like and share. Like the recipe. Keep eye open. The book will be out soon. With lots more uh, recipes. Lots more quotes. A lot more fitness. Have a wonderful evening. Peace. Love.